and welcome to an InView training video. Today's video is going to go kind of an overview of the software, how the menus work, how to bring in items, just kind of be able to navigate the software and get started with it. It's, it's kind of intended that you either just started our 10 day trial or you're new to the software and learning it, um, or you're just curious and want to kind of get a good overview of the software. Um, so I've kind of started out here on our website. If you're new to InView, you can click on this 10 day trial button and somebody like myself will get a hold of you. We'll figure out what your needs are and get you set up with a uh, fully functional test of the software. Um, the other thing that's available to you and, and you know, you're seeing this video now, is we have a lot of help available. So on our YouTube channel here, if you kind of go to the InView um, YouTube channel, this top section is going to be kind of more overview, more company related stuff. The next section, these InView packaging suite features, this is going to go in and dig in a little bit to the different features of the software. And there's a number of these videos and we're adding ones all the time. Our workflow, um, these are just a lot of, there's a whole number of videos in here that we've created over time that you can kind of look and explore with InView. This new tips and tricks section, these are intended to stay around a minute in length and just kind of help you with quick little tips and tricks about the software. And then uh, this is the training section. You probably got to this video here and this is gonna go much more in depth um, on the overall InView package. If you're on our website, you can also click on our download section. If you're just getting started with the 10 day trial, we've got a few training um, sections here that you can use. Once you're a subscriber or an owner, then you can come down and you'll have full access to all these training guides. Plus, when you click on our help button inside of InView, you'll get into a, a full help document. So let's uh, drop into InView and kind of follow up on that help. I'm going to go into a uh, like our options menu here and maybe click on units. And then when I click help here, you'll see I get a full... Um, it actually links directly to here and full help on this item. So anywhere that I click um, on help on the menu I'm in, I'm going to get full in-depth help on that item directly, saving you time. All right. So let's go ahead and start and um, let's pull in something out of one of our package and display libraries. So you'll notice on the corner here, there's a little down arrow and Anywhere there's a down arrow, it means there's more than one option. So if I click and hold, I get our packaging library and I get our display library. So I'm going to start with the packaging library. And here, this is where we have over 2,000 uh, packages, displays, everything available to you. But we're in the packaging section now. And so let's start up here, like in the corrugated packaging. We'll go to maybe our FEFCO designs. And if I click on some of these, you'll start to see you know, up pulls all kinds of resizable uh, parametric designs. We're gonna go into the 400s, get a folding box. And today's project, we're gonna put a wine bottle in a box. Um, so let's use this self-locking box. It's, uh, you would kind of notice it as a pizza box. That's what it's probably common use is. And down here, we'll get a couple of buttons. So this button will allow us to open an InView. This button, we can open it into a Dolby. So I'm gonna pull it straight into InView. Now, once I'm in InView, you can see that I can grab the box. I'm, I'm, I've clicked and held on the image and I can rotate it around because I'm in this mode right here. If I was in this mode, <clears throat> I can move it left and right. But there's, if you have some keyboard shortcuts, this can really save you some time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna scroll my mouse and you'll see that it's moving in and out. If I hold shift and I scroll my mouse, it'll move left and right. And if I hold the alternate key and I scroll my mouse, it'll move up and down. Okay. Now, like I said, if you click on this one here, you're going to be able to move it left and right. We also have these zoom keys. So this will zoom all. And then if I want to not use the scroll and I want to use this zoom key, I can zoom, you know, in and out by holding the mouse. I'm going to go back to the rotate and you can see it rotate around. Now I can also click which side do I want to see. So if I click here and I come down to, you know, this angle here, it'll show me this top or maybe we want this side here. It'll rotate it around. 
Then I can also come over here and I can look at it into a wireframe or solid wire. So here you can see we're in a solid wire. If I go to the next one, I've got a transparent kind of view and the last one, a full wireframe. So this can help you kind of troubleshoot, um, you know, maybe see what you want to see inside the box as you're building it. We'll go back to a solid. A couple other quick features are these tape recorder buttons here. So we have these various steps that we can move our box through. So first, um, if I just hit the play button, it'll play all the way through, fold up the box. I can also go one step at a time. So here's a step, here's a step. I can go back in the other direction and do the steps. Or I can just click over here and I can move my way through the various steps. Okay. So let's, we've kind of played with a little bit of that. Let's go over, we have a, two tabs down here at the bottom. You'll notice this one has 3D in it. So I'm on the 3D tab. If I click on this one, I'm now on the 2D tab. So here's the 3D, here's the 2D. And in here, um, I get the, this, this is my 2D CAD representation of my box. Over here on the right, you'll see that I get some variables and they match up to these uh, different items out here. So if I double click on the L, for example, it'll show you that we're adjusting this length here. If we do the W, we're adjusting this width and H, the height, so the height of the box. <clears throat> if I click on different items in here, I will go click on this, for example, I'll get some new parameters that define that whole part of the box. So let's just come in here and let's resize our box a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to make this a, for our wine bottle, I kind of measured our bottle out. I'm going to say 12 inches by 3.5. And then I can also put math in here. I could say that I want it to be 2 plus 1.5. And then you'll notice over here in this value, it's going to give me um, 3.5. So it, it knows what we put in here. <clears throat> You know, let's say that you wanted to convert something from metric um, to here. And so somebody says, hey, I'm going to give you something that's, uh, let's say, 55 millimeters. Well, I could say that divided by 25.4, and then I'll get whatever my width is. You can also use full parentheses and almost anything under the sun. We could also make H equal W. Okay, so that way anytime we change... Um, H, then dub it, um, or anytime we change W, H will change also. So if I make this three, now both of them change to three. If I make this 3.5, both of them change. So let's go back and look at our 3D. So it still looks the same because we have to refresh it. So I have a refresh button right over here. So I'm going to click refresh and now we get our new box. The other thing we might want to do to this box is we might want to make it out of a different material. So I'm going to go over here, back to our 2D. I'm going to right, and we could do this on either tab, but I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to my properties. So on properties, I can see right now that this is corrugated cardboard and I'm in E flute. And here is my material thickness, about 60 thousandths. So we have all kinds of materials already in this library for you, but you can also add the materials to it. So let's take um, and make our box about a, you know, almost an eighth of an inch. So we'll go to B flute and let's make it white. So you'll notice our box just grew, these joints, everything just grew because it's parametric. So it's making those adjustments for you. And you'll now see that we're white and we're adjusted. Let's fold our box back up, They'll come together. And there you go. So you'll also notice that when I'm moving this around, um, the box is just staying in the position it's in. So I can guide people on, you know, how I want that 3D to work by putting in some camera angles. So over here on the right, we're going to click on this first step and we're going to insert a step above. Okay. And for here, I'm going to say, put in a viewpoint. This is a camera angle. And so when I play this, it's going to take the view of where I put it. So if I move this away and I now hit play, you'll see it's going to go back to that camera angle. And then as it moves along here, when I'm in this step, for example, I can move it, rotate it, and I can insert another viewpoint here. 
and let's play it a little bit more. And then when it's all done, I can come down, I can zoom in and say, okay, here is my final state. That's how I'd like it to see. And so in step six, we'll insert a viewpoint. Now let's play from the beginning. So you'll see it move a little bit, come together, and then when it closes up, there we are. All right. So pretty straightforward so far, a little bit of navigation. Um, let's go back to the 2D tab. And let's say that we want to make a modification to this box. So if I go to my objects, remember earlier I said if you hit the drop down box here, you can see that we've got lots of different um, options for each one of these. So let's, let's come in and let's say that on these tabs down here, we would like to radius them. So I'm going to put in a half inch radius, 0.5. And then if we click here and here, you can see that's radius here and here, that's radius. And let's go back and look at our 3D. So let's open up the lid. And actually, let's get all the way back to our initial state. And then let's refresh this model. And you'll now see that these radiuses have been added. If you have our standard version or our CAD tools, you get a <clears throat> full, full set of these um, CAD editing tools. But what I've just added, you know, is, is going to adjust with the design. But let's say that we wanted to put a, like a finger cut out or something on here. If I don't use one of our parametric components, when I resize this, it'll change. So let me show you. So we're going to grab a circle. So we've got a center and diameter. We're going to pull this circle out. And so you can see now we've got a circle on there. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go to our transformation tab. So notice these tabs along the top. I'm going to go from objects to transformation. Then I've got like, I can extend lines. I can trim lines. I've got all kinds of cool tools in here. So I'm going to use trim. I'm going to trim that out, trim that out. Let's go back and look at our 3D. Hit refresh. And you'll now see up here at the top, we have our, our cutout on there. But unfortunately, when I go to resize this box, let's make it um, a little bit shorter. Let's make it three inches. You'll notice that my parametric geometries, everything's adjusted, and I now have this part sitting in space. So we're going to delete that. To delete, you can either right click and delete, or I um, pressed control and delete, and control and delete will allow you to delete that. So let's put this back to 3.5. Now let's go get one of our. Uh, compound components. So we're going to go to, we've got all kinds of cool components that help make up this whole resizable library, but we are going to go get some cuts. Um, and I've got under this section, I've got these thumb cuts. So let's grab this thumb cut centered and drag it out into the drawing. And it's going to give me a option here. See that little uh, button that's wanting to drop there. So we're going to click there and then we'll go to the other side and we'll click there. And now I get a new set of parameters. So I'll apply it. Let's go back to our parameter list and I'll click on this item here. And you can see there's the thumb cut. We also need to trim this out. So we'll go back to our trim and we're going to trim it out. Okay. I hit escape to get out of different functions. Okay. So we've added our thumb cut. And now let's adjust it. So we can just put in a value like 0.75, or we may want it to be some, uh, you know, let's say factor based on this width here. This is the TEH. So let's put in TEH, and then we'll take it times uh, 0.5. All right. So now anytime we adjust um, the overall box height. Let's bring our box back out so we can see it here. So let's say that we make this three. So then TEH you'll see is now five eighths. If we go back to 3.5, oh, that's not really changing there. Let's actually change the height of TEH. So that's a quarter. So let's make that, uh, or one and a quarter. Let's make it 1.5. So now you'll see TEH got uh, TEH got bigger, which then also made our thumb cut get bigger. So just something that you can do if you want to try to have it associated to 
um, some other value. All right, so now let's go back. Oh, actually, the other thing real quick, you'll see it. Notice as we're adjusting the things, everything's staying like it should. So as we resize, um, you, the, the box is um, basically adjusting like it should. Come back to our preview, refresh. Everything's like we should see it. Okay. So we've now kind of created our box. We've got our thumb cut on here. Everything's the material we want, all that. The last thing we might want to do before we start putting some graphics and stuff on it is, we're, this is a, a wine bottle box, so let's stick our wine bottle in it. So I'm going to go get some 3D objects. So this tool right here that I just clicked on, that pulls up my 3D integration tool. And we're going to drop a wine bottle in this box. So first, before we do that, let's get on the step that we want to insert it on. So that would be right here. And um, so we'll bring this back up. And let's go then. And let's grab our wine bottle. So we're going to go, when you pull this tab up here, you get these external 3D objects. So I'm going to click on um, objects and you'll see like if I come into food and beverage, I get apples and candy bars, um, all kinds of different things that you can uh, bring in. But we, we want a, a glass bottle. So let's go to our glass bottles here. And I'm going to pick this wine bottle. And we want to bring that in and drop it in the box. So sometimes it's going to be a little tricky. You want to get the bottle orientated in the direction you want and then drop it in the box. Okay, so there we go. We are now in our box, but it's kind of off to the side a little bit, so let's fix that. I'm going to double click on this external 3D object. We now have a new item in our, our uh, library here. So when I click on that, we can see there's our wine bottle. And from top to bottom, it looks pretty good, but I'd like it to be off that wall. So let's find out which direction that is. It looks like it's the Y direction because you can see Z moves it up and down and the X moves it through the box that way. So let's let's move it in Y and let's say like 0.3 inches. So yeah, not bad. Maybe we could actually go in and measure, but we're going to say 0.5. And whoops, I clicked enter, which took me out of it. And that looks pretty centered up. OK, so the other thing we could do with the bottle, too, is we have the ability to rotated in different directions you can see um, so that and then if you want to do a corkscrew with it sometimes you've got to get it just in the right direction to corkscrew it also but you can do that too okay the other thing that i'm going to want to do is we're going to want to drop the bot wine bottle into the box so i am going to pick it so that it's not initially visible and then let's move it up five inches and say okay so now on this step here, let's insert a step below and we're going to insert two steps below. We're now on this step here, we're going to make our part, we're going to make it visible. So we're going to show it up here. So we got these different things that we can do. So now there's our, our, our object. And then the next thing we want to do on the next step is we want to move it into the box. So let's find out which direction that is. That looks like that's this one here. So we got a slider. We can move it up and down. And if you remember, we moved it up five inches. So I'm going to move it down five inches. And now let's see what happens to our animation. So our box is coming together. There's our wand bottle. And it all closes up. So the other thing we could do if we wanted is we could try to present it open at the very end so we could add a couple steps so we could say let's insert a step below here and insert a step and so um, like on this last step right here that's where it's closed let's actually open that lid back up on this step so let's say we're going to fold and let's open this back up and we'll maybe open it like that and then we'll present it maybe like this okay and so let's insert a viewpoint so now let's just play through this one more time 
So you can see our box coming together. In drops our wine bottle, closes up, and then there we are, we're presenting it. Okay, so we've kind of done what we've really wanted to do to get our box prepared and ready for some graphics. So let's save, let's save this project file, save as an InView file. And I'm gonna throw this in my demo directory. And we will call this wine box demo, save. So now I'm gonna close out of InView and let's go into Adobe Illustrator. I've already got a project open in here. Let's go file open. And we, in our demo directory here, notice we can see InView files because we have an, a, a plugin and this will open up our wine bottle demo that we just brought in. So we're inside of Adobe Illustrator. And if you're used to Adobe Illustrator, you can see like we've got an in-view workspace. I've also made my own with adding some graphics and stuff here. There's a full plugin. So if we go look at in-view, these are the different plugins that are working inside of Adobe. Um, so here's our 3D. If you have a couple monitors like I do and you're not doing this video shooting, I like to put my 3D on a second monitor so I can make it big and see it. Here's my articles um, for my different artworks. And then if we create a layout, which we'll do in a little bit, you can see them here. So the first thing let's do is let's, let's create two artworks for this. So I'm gonna come click right here and I'm gonna move myself up here so you can see it, okay? And I'm gonna create a uh, new article. So there's a new article and I want a new artboard for that one. So let's just say artboard two. So we now have two artboards going. Let's drag, I'm gonna put myself back down over here for later, you'll see. And um, let's drag some artwork out here. So I've just got some kind of cool swirly, let's grab this thing, throw it out here. All right, so here is one of our graphics. We'll drag it over that way. And then let's get a second graphic. Uh, I'll grab that thing and throw it out here. Now, if you'll watch on our 3D item over here at the right, as I start to ply this artwork, you can see it's coming on the box over here. And so as I work with it and I drag it out, you can now see there's the artwork on the box. And if I wanna see the other article, I can go to article two and there's the other artwork. And let's say on one of these that we wanted some design on the inside too, we could say, let's call this new, new, and um, oh, I put myself, let me move myself out of the way a little bit again here so you can see that. So we'll go and we'll say artwork, new on the rear, and we'll call this inside, okay? And we'll make both these the same inside. And then let's put some artwork on the inside of the box. So, I don't know, um, we'll put some cats in there, all right? Okay, so when we drag this over, you'll now see some stretched out cats and they're on the inside of our box, okay? So we've done this, we'd probably like to go and cut some of these out. So when we're in here, I didn't do a layout when I'm in view, but I'm, linked up to um, InView. So I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna say, Edit in Package Designer. So now I'm connected over and you'll see in Package Designer, here is our box. And so that's one of the boxes. If I go to my layers over here, that's article. So here's article one. And here is article two. Okay, so we can see both those and uh, we can see inside the box. So we have a couple different options we can do. Let's say that we want to make a nest of these. So up here on our tabs again, we can go click on the layout tab. And then this will allow me to do a new uh, layout. And we have different nesting uh, wizard options. So if I run like an automatic nester, this is just gonna use the one article. 
I can pick different sheet sizes and we have a sheet library to add, but let's say we want a four by eight sheet. Um, and so if we pick this one, it's going to tell us like, okay, here's how much waste there is and, and the different layouts that we have. I say, okay. And now you can see there is a layout. Okay. And we can look at the properties of this layout and let's give it a name like layout uh, one say okay we'll go back to our <clears throat> box again and let's create a new uh, layout this time we're going to do one sheet nesting Just say okay and now i can come in and i can try to pick um a couple of these different articles okay and so let's just say that we want to get our uh, we'll go to use a four by eight sheet again and this lets us uh, set some margins around the sheet and how much spacing do we want. Um, so let's say we want to put 0.25 between the items. And then let's pick some rotations. So here we can say 0, 090 or 180, 270. And then how many of each one of these do we want to deliver? So let's see if we can get like four and four on this sheet. and say, okay, next. So it's doing some thinking and here you'll go on our sheet. So let's go ahead and um, pick which one we want. So we'll take oh, the sheet up here, say finish. And so here's our nested up sheet. It looks like we probably could even got some more on there, but we'll take what we've got right now. And so now we have some nests. The other thing that I wanna do is I might want to show this to my customer to sign off on. So I'm going to go back to my 3D tab. I'm going to upload this into the cloud and we'll choose a name for this model. So we'll say one box, uh, one hit upload. And once it's communicating with our server, if I click this link here, I can copy the link to this. And then if I click here, it'll open it up in my browser online. This is my shared space. And so you'll see that I'm now in a normal browser that anybody can use. If we want to play through this, this is something that um, your team or your customer who doesn't have um, InView can see and they can choose to sign off on the box or not. And so they have some choices over here. For example, let's, uh, we could approve the design. Or we could say redesign and say um, cool box, but I like dogs, not cats. All right, confirm. So we can say over here, we got a history of this. We could say, great, I will change to dogs. Give me one hour. Okay, one hour. And then the nice thing about this is you've got this history. You can track it with the project. The customer can still kind of check it out, look at it, or your team, you're ready to go. So let's drop back into InView, close this. And now we're going to close out of here and I'm going to say save. Yes. Now when I'm back into AI, you'll see up here, I've got a couple of different layouts. Um, um, yep, right up here you can see. I make sure my face wasn't in the way. So if I go and create this four by eight sheet layout, I'm gonna say, let's generate a bleed offset. I'm gonna say two millimeters and I can generate the front and the rear of this. So we'll generate a front. There's our front sheet. We come back over here and then let's do the same thing. Once our layout appears, let's then create a rear. And what it's, what it's done for you, which is really time saving, nice is it's come in and it's done all the bleed offset work for you and everything is done in there. Okay, which is really kind of cool. It's a big time saver. And then you'll see on this other one, same thing. We've got all this here. But let's say we'd have done a bigger bleed offset and we ended up with some conflicts. So let's go back over to our other sheet here. And this time we're gonna use the other layout that we generated, layout one. And let's put in like a four millimeter bleed offset. And let's generate um, the front. 
And now you'll notice that I've got some numbers in here because I've got some conflicts that have to be resolved. So if we go to our in view layout conflicts, I'm going to move myself out of the way again so you can see. And you get these different groups here. If I highlight the group one, okay, I can choose which one do I want to win um, in saying where the graphics go. And so I can choose the one side or the two side. So let's zoom in here. And if I choose the one side, you're going to now see that this bleed has has come down further on this one side. It's still off, so it's probably not of a big deal for us. But the same thing, like if we go to the group two, we can choose, let's choose two this time. So it's gonna take the bottom and it's going to overlap on the top. And so we could either just increase the gap or in our case, we can kind of work through, study each one of these. Let's just choose one and one. And so now everything is solved, ready to go. That one's just slightly over that one. Now you can take this file and you can save it as a PDF and you can send it to um, your printer. And then you could also save um, the cut lines and send it to your cutter. If we go down here and we look in the layers section um, and we turn on and off the different items here. So let's look at, we'll turn off our conflicts. Let's minimize those. See, we can turn on and off our artwork. We got rid of all the didn't get all the conflicts off. So now you can see that um, you can output the different layers. And so your spot colors um, are going to be um, what you're going to use to go, you know, cut out. And then your graphics, you could turn off the die lines and just have the graphics to send to your printer. The only other thing we didn't do is we didn't put any fiducials on these. So uh, it's a step I missed, but let's just go look at it real quick. I'm going to go back into, we'll just close out of these. We don't need them. All right. Let's close out of that last one. We don't need it. So let's go back now and we'll edit in package designer one more time. Edit package designer. So I'm now back in package designer. I'm going to click on my layout and like, let's say, take this layout here for example, we can go get um, our fiducials here and we can then start adding some fiducials around. So let's zoom in over here and say, we want a fiducial here and a fiducial here. And maybe we want one over here, up here. And it's up to us. Maybe we want one at the top of the sheet here too. So we could put it right there. Okay. So then when we bring them back over to Adobe, you'll see um, that we got that. So this is just one training session um, that we've done. And uh, I'm going to do another one on the displays. I'm going to do some others. But hopefully this helps you get started with the software and helps answer some questions. So thank you.